Hi, my name is Johan Olivier and I'm from the Department of Applied Physics and Instrumentation. Now the title of my fourth year project is Remote PC Emulation of a PLC Controlled Batch Process. So what that involves is controlling a batch process unit, which in this case is the Bytronic Batch Process Unit. So that's being controlled with a microcontroller, which in this case is Arduino Uno with the Ethernet shield. Now the reason we're using Ethernet is to demonstrate that I can control my process from anywhere within CIT and as a matter of fact I can control it from anywhere in the world from any device as long as it's compatible with my software and as long as I can tunnel into the CIT network. So to do this I had to create a module interface which is just a bit of electronics to convert the 5 volts from the Arduino to 24 volts for the batch process and then from 24 volts back to 5 volts for the Arduino. So the protocol I used was TCP IP which is basically a telnet command. So I can telnet into my Arduino, giving it functions like go right, go down, go up, pick a product up from station seven, whatever you want. And then I created a user interface using visualbasics.net. So I'll show you in a minute what that involved, which is a very nice application. So I'll just quickly show you what the project is and the interface module. So this is my Bytronic batch process trainer. So it's pretty much just a system that moves to eight possible stations and it drops off product pretty much just this. So that's currently connected to a device I had to build. So that's my module interface. So as you can see, I have my Arduino Ethernet shield that's plugged right on top of my Arduino Uno. So I have my Ethernet cable coming out, and that's just going to our local network. The device is getting powered. At the moment, it's being powered from a PC. It can be powered from your mains. I just don't have the converter. So in here is a resistor network. Now that is used to convert my 24 volts down to 5 volts. And as you can see right down at the bottom, right there, I have a relay circuit. So that switches on my 5 volts. And it allows the system to operate. So as you can see, the system is now currently not at its home position. Now the home position is top left, which is about here. And that lets the system know where it is. So if I run my application, which I'll show you now, the system should reset itself. Now I already have the project built. So, that's it. So, we'll just minimize all this stuff. Uh, so, if we run this, you'll see it says that the system is currently resetting. And if we look over, we'll see that, yes, the system is resetting. So, on the main screen, we can go into manual mode. Now we can either manually move the process around by using the button. So if I click right on, you can see the system now moves to the right. I can now stop it. I can do the same for left. What's also a very nice feature was Instead of using the buttons, I added a keyboard. So as you can see there, if I hold my R key, the system moves right, L, U, and D. So if I hold R, for example, you can see the system moving right as long as I'm holding R. As soon as I release it, the system stops. Now, that works for down and up and left as well. Now the next function is the automatic function. So if we click on that, we're faced with either drop off product or pick up product. So if we drop off product at station four, a message box lets us know in the middle that the product is dropping at station four. So if we click on station four and we come back over,
So we can now collect our product from station 4. Now with the emergency stop, it quits the program, but it also lets you know that there's an error after occurring. So if we drop off product at station six, for example, the system is now currently moving to station six. However, if I hit my emergency stop button, the system stops immediately. And a message box also appears saying, for safety, the system will now shut down. And if you click OK, the whole program is discarded off. So with my program, there's also an about button. Now this just gives a summary of what my project was about, which I'll paste in the description of this, this video. So in this, we have buttons that'll take you to the Arduino website. So if we click that, we'll see that a page pops up, taking to the Arduino website. Another button takes you to the Bytronic Batch Process Trainer page. So that's just the Arduino website there. Now an electronics button, that just gives a quick summary of how I converted my voltages. And also, as explained earlier, Telnet values were used. And this is just a list of all the Telnet values that I have, which I'll talk about in a minute. So. So the protocol that my project uses is TCP IP and Telnet. So in the Arduino software, right at the bottom, there's a sub called instructions. So if you only press enter, this list of instructions will appear. So to test this, you can use many applications, for example, hyperterminal. But for this demonstration purposes, I'm going to use putty. So we'll run it. No, it asked me for IP address. The IP address was specified in my Arduino software, which is right up here. So as you can see, my IP address is 157.190.32.206. So we'll enter that. And Telnet also uses port number 23. So if we open that communication now, so, that's our Telnet values. So, as you can see, to move the system right, we just say RT on. So, if I type RT on and hit enter, the system now moves to the right. Now, to stop the system, I have to give a command RT off. And the system stops. So, what these commands does is as you can see in the code if it receives rt off it writes the value low for moving right and it does that for every other button as well so that's the end of my presentation now if you want to know any more about it or if any questions just comment down below and i'll try to get back to you whenever i can